Ladies and gentlemen, greetings this afternoon. Okay, I think I'm in a funeral. Let me start. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, greetings this afternoon. Thank you to this beautiful lady which I married many years ago and I'm still marrying her and I will still continue to marry her. She is the only woman that attracts me. Thank you for that beautiful uh, introduction. Is it working, sir? Thank you. When the Iwanas approached us to come and uh, talk this afternoon, it was as if it is not going to happen in 2022. We had a date and we confirmed the date. And I remember we had made all the bookings and then they sent a message. It looks like we're going to postpone. And we postponed. And they said, no, we're gonna look for another date. But the date that we're going to look at should not be over the long weekend because people have commitments. I don't know, that's fine. We look at the date, and today we found a date, and we are here, all of us. Yeah. And I think you, you, you deserve a round of applause for being here. Thank you. I first met uh, Dr. Wallace Ngoki when my wife was working at the city of Cape Town. I think it was at a political height at the time when the ANC uh, started uh, working at the municipality. They are the ones that were leading the municipality at the time. And that's the first time I met uh, Dr. Mkwoki. Uh, since then, we've been meeting, and he's a great man. And this initiative, I think it's one of the best initiatives. He, he is, he, is, he is an icon that could have been used by Isisel. And thank you very much for the thought, and thank you very much for iconizing the concept of fatherhood uh, under his name. And today I'm therefore going to share a few things on the issue of uh, fatherhood. Uh, It's a pity that I can't see what's happening behind me. All right. I'm going to look at the importance of fatherhood and I'm just going to share a few things there. Uh, the question that I need to look at is whether a father is absent or present, emotionally or physically, in his child life, that makes a significant difference not necessarily at the time when the child is growing, but at the later development and behavior that the child will have afterwards. Therefore, your impact of being present or absent will be reaped by your child many days later than when you have sown it. This session will look at the important roles fathers play in the lives of their children. Maybe for me to also see what you are seeing, is it possible that I can stand this way so that I can see there? Because unfortunately it's not coordinated. Can I do that to those who are doing IT and then move this? Thank you. <laughs> okay. You, I, I feel it. You feel it. Yeah. It's good to be there. No, I no, what is it? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Just ah. 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 Ah.
today I'm going to be looking at the important roles fathers play in the lives of their children. I think it's something that we will look at and see how it will take us. Various issues related to modern fathers will be explored uh, this afternoon as we go along the discussion. The, when it comes to the importance of fatherhood, we ask a question, what is a father? And we are going to be sharing a few things on what a father is. The act of being a father as opposed to merely fathering a child. I think it has been mentioned that there is a difference between a donor and a father. All right? Therefore, the act of being a father is to be a breadwinner for your children. The act of being a father is to nurture your children. And the act of being a father is to model a way for your children. Because you want to see a better future. That future starts with you as a father to model it to your child. And the other important aspect is that if we are looking at this, a father is a creator of an environment so that a child can be socialized into that environment. A father is a moral and spiritual developer. When we're looking at a father, we're looking at someone who's going to develop spiritual life in my life. We're looking at someone who's going to develop a moral fiber in my life. That's why you hear the government talking about moral regeneration. And unfortunately, those who are leading it, they are morally bankrupt themselves, but they are leading moral uh, degeneration. And therefore, a father is someone who's actually doing that. A father is a provider of sense of stability. We become stable at home because there's a stable father. We become stable at home because there's a father who can give a direction. We become stable at home because there's a father who can lead at home. The other important aspect is who is a father? All right, we, we discussed about what is a father. Now, who is a father? Now, a father is someone with an understanding heart. Remember, there are children who do not have the heart of a senior person. They have a heart of a child. Therefore, they need to, a father is someone who understands a, a child who has that understanding heart. Secondly, Children make mistakes, and a father is someone who has an ability or a spirit to forgive, because mistakes happen among children. And a father is someone who expresses affection and generosity. You heard the children here when they were saying, my father loves me, my father makes me laugh. Therefore, they need that affection. That's what a father is all about. A father is a source of strength and support right from the very start. And the start is not when the child is born. The start is when the child is conceived. From the very start, your participation as a father is actually needed. A father is a constant readiness to help in a kind and thoughtful way. Therefore, you are not there to, to be an, a, an ambulance person. You are not called for emergencies. You are there. We talk about the ministry of presence. The father is present. The father is not an ambulance man. You are not there because there is a crisis, therefore you are called. Fathers are not crisis managers, but fathers are present fathers. They are there to be present and to see things happen. Then, what is fatherhood in a nutshell? Fatherhood represents, oh, father's presence has a huge impact on the development and well-being of a child, as I've indicated in the previous slide. Fathers also play a critical role in the nurturing of their children by providing responsible and loving care that meets their emotional and social needs. Therefore, as fathers, we have a responsibility. And the responsibility is to nurture. The responsibility is to provide love and care to our children. 
so that they can grow and they can have a spiritual developed individual. Responsible fathers are concerned with the well-being of their children and their desire to see their children succeed in all areas. Children need to develop mentally, children need to develop psychologically, children need to develop socially, they, they are social beings, and children need to develop their speech as we talk and share with them. Therefore, they need to develop all around, and as fathers, we have a responsibility to make sure that that happens. The essence of fatherhood or male involvement, it means in their lives, we need to be involved. It means in their lives, we need to be consistent. That's why you have a problem with a father who disciplines the, when a child does this, and then when the child does something wrong, also the father doesn't discipline. Therefore, you need to have a consistent way of doing things. If you want to empower, or if you want to reinforce something, there must be consistency. Because if you are not consistent, the child is not going to learn what you want to teach that child to understand. The other important aspect is the awareness. As children are growing, the way we treat them, the way we approach them, the way we do things to them becomes dif different from how they were when they were growing. Therefore, we need to be aware of the development of the children, the stages they are developing. We also need to be aware uh, that they need to be nurtured in each of the stages they are going to experience in, in life. Then the other important thing, I think it is wise for us to probably look at what I call a working definition of what a father is. And the first thing that I want to share with you is that fathers are diverse. And secondly, that there is no universal definition of the roles of the father. And I like it when I read in the Bible, like it has been mentioned that there are pl pl plethora of fathers in the Bible, both in the Old and in the New Testament. But if you are looking at each character, you are going to see that they did have one way of uh, raising their children. And if you are looking at them, even though they are role models, but each family is very unique. It has its own unique challenges, and children are unique. The first child is not the same as the second child. The second child is not the same as the third one. Therefore, as a father, you need to be aware of those dynamics as uh, children are growing. Then the, one of the working definitions that I've come up with, which would be helping us as we move forward, is that a father is called upon to be a leader. That's point number one. The father is a leader of a family. And as a leader, leadership is not forced. You can't force people to follow you. You earn their trust to follow. Therefore, as children that are growing, as a father, you are leading them, you can't force them to follow you as a father. If you are forcing them, there will come a time when they say, okay, we can now make our own decisions and do our own things because you are forcing them. Children also need to earn you their trust. They need to earn the, your loyalty as a father. Therefore, leadership is earned. You earn it. You are not imposing it. You are not saying, I'm the leader here. The minute you say, I'm the father here, you know you have lost the battle. Because you are now you are now claiming your position. You are not having that relationship because they must do things because there's a relationship between you and them as a father. They must not do things because they are forced to do them because you have power over them. They will create that relationship. And that relationship will make them go a long way. Even when they are old, they'll be able to come to you and share certain things with you because you've created a relationship. But if you have become a, an imposing father, when it's time for them to make their own decision, they will never speak to you because now they will say they are no longer in your hands. Therefore, it is important that as a leader, you must earn the stripes of leading your family. Then the second one is, you need to be a provider in the family. 
I know these days we work with our wives, but the original intent was for a man to provide for the family. And of course we know now circumstances have changed, but a man must always be cognizant of the fact that he is the provider. The wife is assisting you to provide. Let it not be your wife who provides at home. The children must learn that pattern, that you are the leader, and secondly, you are the provider. Thirdly, you are the protector of the family. The family must feel good in your hands. The family must feel protected in your hands. And the family must know that there is someone who will go miles to make sure that I'm protected as a member of the family. And to give an example of Christ's love of by being loving towards the children's mother. Very important. Kids are looking at how you love their mother. And how you love their mother translates to a good father to them. Because they see, before they came, you were with this person. They will leave you with this person. If you are not treating your wife in a better way, children will always be concerned that what was happening before we came, if this is the life. And what will happen when we leave, if this is the life. Therefore, just be mindful of the fact that children are not only looking at you as a father, they are looking at how you treat their mother. And once they get old, if you continually insult their mother, when they are old, those insults will come from them to you because you have taught them that in life you don't respect other people. Now it's important to make sure that when you treat their, their mother, you treat their mother in a way that they in turn will use to treat you. I would like to share some few statistics uh, this afternoon. I'm looking at statistics living, I mean children living with their biological fathers because we're talking about fatherhood. Now, I'm looking at all the races. I have blacks, I have coloreds, Indians, and whites. Only 31%, uh, th about 32% of children that are living with their biological fathers in South Africa. That was in 2021. Only 32. All right? With coloreds, only 50, 51% living with their biological fathers. And I want you to look at Indians and whites. 86% of Indian children are living with their biological fathers. And 80% of white children are living with their uh, biological fathers. Can you see the problem we have as a black community? That we have so many children that are not living with their fathers. It is that donation, the sperm donor concept. All right? There were many children are not. It's something that we really need to worry about because this is happening in our backyard. All right. Uh, let me continue. I also got some statistics. This one was a survey that was done. Uh, fatherhood statistics from the general household. The survey was done in 2019. Here we are talking about children, a core resident with biological fathers. That was in 2019. Core residents with both parents, it's, it was 33%. Now this one includes all the races, not only a, a, the black race. Now, 33% it's parents, both parents living with their children, biological children. Now, here you have core residents with biological father, but not mother. Children that are living with their biological fathers. Now, you have four. I want to take you back to the previous slide, where you had 32 that are living with their biological parents, fathers, all right? But here, only 4% of fathers who are living with their biological children, which is another problem that you see. Now, here it's co-residence with biological mother, not father. Can you see the difference? From 4 to 42, all right? Mothers that are living with their biological children, okay? 
then co-resident with neither biological parent is 21%. This is even more than this. All right? And this one is actually indicating that someone else has taken the responsibility of the father who was not fathering those children. All right? It happens when there is divorce. It happens when, they, 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 when someone is widowed. And it also happens when they are single parenting. All right? Therefore, you find someone here uh, taking a child. For instance, if I have a child, then my mother takes that child and my father, and that child goes in that environment without us as the biological parents. Then you can see that there is a big problem that fathers in particular have when it comes to the issues of parenting. All right. Um, I'm just going to quickly scan what I call the types of fathers based on legal social uh, conditions. We have what we call the adoptive fathers. It's being a father through a legal process, all right? Because there are children who do not have fathers, and there are people who don't have children and who would like to contribute to the well-being of children, all right? Then the second one would be the biological father, and being a father through the process of sexual intercourse. When you have a child, you've made a child, and or the Lord through you has made a child because there is no one who can make a child. It's God who's providing children for us. Because you can be married and not have children. Yeah. All right, therefore, it is him who provides. Therefore, you get what we call the biological father. Then you got, then you get a stepfather, all right? Stepfather, you are fathering someone's children. They are in your possession. Then you have a posthumous father. The father passed away and he is no longer there now and the child is here to be taken care of. The father is not around. Then you have a surprise father. <laughs> you grow up not knowing who your father is and when you are 21, your father comes up as a surprise. <laughs> All right. You were growing up looking for a father, wanting that bond, but you never had. But when you are now working, then the father says, I'm around. <laughs> then you have a teenage father. While you were still in high school, you were playing rough, and the, and, and, and the game resulted in a goal. All right? And because you were a teenager at the time, you even forgot that there was something that you did. And that child is a, a teenage child, and no one cares about that child. And there's no relationship that you've even built with that child. And your life is going on while that child doesn't have someone to support. Are we still together? I have not left you anyway. Okay, why are fathers so important? I think this is a question that I want us to look at this afternoon. The potential role of the father at each developmental stage that children pass through. If you were a woman and you are now pregnant, what is needed is a present father. You need someone who's going to sit next to you as a pregnant woman. You need someone who's going to rub your feet. You need someone who's going to rub your back because you mostly use your back. You need someone who's going to carry your bags when you go to a gynecologist. You need someone who's going to sit there with you and experience the movements of the baby through that scan. You need someone who's going to walk with you, that ministry of presence. That's the first step that you take as a father. You are not a donor, you are a father. Yeah. Then the second thing that is important, when the child has been born, in the toddler years of a child, a child needs a playing father. 
a father who's going to run with the child, a father who's going to play the ball with the child, a father who's going to play the, with, with the, the toys and use the toys with the child. You need an active father. That's why it is not advisable to have children in your old age. <laughs> Because how are you going to play with the child? Because children are demanding. They need to play with you. Then, in the preschool years, children need storytellers. People are going to tell them stories of what happened. And that's how they learn things. And children need a parent who's going to be involved in their educational life. Those homeworks, they want the father to sit with them and do the homeworks. They appreciate more when the father is active and enjoying the work with them. I know sometimes you are too busy, but never be too busy for your child. And then they also need someone who's played. Children remember most the games they played. I'm sure you've heard them here when they were talking. They were talking about father playing, father this. They enjoy, they remember. They don't remember most of the things, but the time you spend with them, they remember that. And it is not too late. You can change. You can spend time with them. They can begin uh, to enjoy having a father like you. In their uh, school age uh, period, children need academic as well as emotional support. There is bullying at school, and when children come and, and confide to you as a parent, you need to take that serious. And there are quite a number of things that are happening to them at that age. They are actually building a relationship with you. Don't deprive them of that relationship. When they have built the relationship, they will be able to go anywhere because they know my father will stand next to me. Then when they are adolescents, they need a friend and they need a confidant. Because they are experiencing new things and they want someone who's going to understand these experiences and be able to talk to them. Once you close the gate, they go to their friends and they learn things that you would have never told them. Because as a parent, you know better. When they are young adults, they need a friend and an advisor. Because now, when they have difficult issues to deal with, they know there's daddy who's going to be able to share with me. He's going to, not going to judge me. He's not going to throw me out. He will listen to what I am saying as his uh, child. Then I want us to focus on four dimensions of uh, core residence and involvement. Just want us to do that now. People think that coexistence has high levels of involvement. While they also think that non-resident results in low involvement. If you don't reside with your child, you will be less involved. That's a traditional thinking that people have. Now, this, to me, presents what I call a limited focus. That if you are here, you are going to be involved. If you are not here, you will not be involved. That's a very limited focus. And I want us to look at what I call the expanded focus on this one. Now, with the expanded focus, in this, you have co-resident with high involvement. All right? In other words, the corner when I am present I can offer much involvement I can be more involved I'm using the word can I can be more involved but it does happen that someone is co-resident but low involved all right you can be here with your child but your child may not feel your presence while you are here. Therefore, the, the fact that you are here does not translate to a high involvement. You can be here with low involvement. Therefore, if you are looking at the traditional model that if you are here as a parent, you are heavily involved, that traditional model does not work these days. 
because we know for a fact that your presence does not always translate to high involvement. Then, non-resident high involvement. All right? We also know that you may not be residing with the child and you may be actively involved in the child's life. That is very possible. You can do that. And at the same time, we know that sometimes if you are not residing with the child, you may not be actively involved in the affairs of the child. Therefore, you cannot decide by me being uh, not resident with the child that I will be less involved or more involved. You can't just decide unless you believe in the limited forecast where you put people in boxes that presence means high involvement, absence means low involvement. Therefore, life is not always operating in that sphere. Therefore, as a parent, as a father, proximity should not be the, the deciding factor. Whether you are here or not here, you are a father. And whether you are here or not here, you have a child who must feel your presence. And your presence is not translating into proximity. Your child needs you in all aspects of life. Therefore, provide that. Don't be a sperm donor, because a sperm donor does not remember how many sperms has he donated and how many children have resulted in those uh, donations of sperms. Be a father and be a responsible and a caring father. Right, let's move and see uh, the characteristics of a father, because we are talking about uh, fathers here. The first thing, a father is an involved person in a child's life. Be involved. You know, when my children were growing up, I used to watch them. I used to take them to school. We used to play. I used to take them out. We would have girls' nights, go with the girls, and now they go with the boy at some point. Those things they remember. And at school, I would go and run with them when they had those uh, events. And when they were swimming at school, I would be there to be with them. That involvement is very important. Never be too busy for your child. Be involved as a father. That's the first characteristic. The second characteristic is that be a supportive father. Support your children. Let them feel that there is a father that will fight their battles. I remember my, my daughter, when they would have issues at school and I would be nearby, she would call me and say Daddy, this and this. But there's one thing they knew, that the father would not be someone who's going to be fighting but the father would be negotiating their way and doing that. Now, when they want a fight, they would not call the father. <laughs> they would not, when they want a fight, they wouldn't call the father. They know who they must call, who will fight. <laughs> then we provided support in various levels. The third thing that is important uh, as a characteristic is love. You know, you may not, you may not, you may not have financial resources. Children don't remember those things. They remember the love you shared with them. They remember you sleeping with them in a sleeper couch, not even having a proper bed. They remember you giving them something helping them to eat something. It may not be even a fancy thing. The love they see from you as a father, they appreciate that. Love your children. Even when they go out there, one of the reasons why these boys are playing with the hearts of our children is because it is when they, they first find love. Because they have not experienced it at home. Love your children. When this boy comes and says this and this, the child must say, I know that from my father. What else can you give? Yeah. 
discipline. Remember, we are preparing these children for the world. They are going to leave us and they will be staying there. If you cannot instill discipline to them, you are going to have corrupt individuals. And corruption has started at home, not at work. Because you didn't instill discipline. You are going to have lazy people who are expecting to get money at the end of the month because you have not instilled discipline. And you are going to get people who don't care, who are not, life is just life to them because there is no discipline. Let us instill that discipline. It is a characteristic that a father has. Then, time. You had the young man here. He says, one thing he loves about his father is making time for him. Our children want us to make time for them. Time to chat. You may even say things, chat, things that are not important. One and they all keep only not even having something. That talk with them, they love it. They enjoy it. It's important to have time with your children. Children want to be protected. They need a father who's going to protect them when the world turns around them. Children need a caring father. You need to care for your children. Children need guidance. That's why they are children. If, if, they, were, if they didn't need guidance, they would be adults. That's why when God created Adam and Eve, he created them as adults because there was no parent to guide them. The, the reason why we have children is because we are parents to guide them. And if we forget that, that we are there to guide, we are making a big mistake. Consistency, very important is the word, consistency. When you do something, you reinforce it by being consistent. And if you are not, you are creating a challenge. Create a space for your child to be him or herself. Now, here I was, I was chatting to my daughter in, 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 in Joburg, and I was saying to her, I'm going to be presenting. Uh, what do you think, what do you think I should add in my presentation? And she said, Daddy, don't forget this one. A father must create a space for a child to be him or herself. Don't suffocate a child. You know, there was a time, I grew up um, envying the legal fraternity. And I wanted to be in that field, but I never had a chance of really studying something in that field, even though it's something that I've enjoyed. Now there was a point where one of my daughters said, I want to be a lawyer. And I said, there it is. And I encouraged my daughter and encouraged my daughter to go and do it. And lo and behold, she did go. And then when she was there, she discovered that this is not what I want. <laughs> and remember how disappointed I was because I wanted her to do that. Now, she is the one now who's saying, remember, Daddy, what happened? Then tell them, <laughs> you must be yourself as a child. They must not impose things on you. And I think this is one of the most important things. And then when she was there, then she chose what she wanted. And I said, okay, this is your choice. You are not wasting my money now. All right? And then she said, I didn't waste money. That was your cost. That was not mine. I didn't waste any money. <laughs> <laughs> and that children can be very honest, brutally honest at times. Uh, father, as a mo fathers are moral leaders, very important. Development of moral and spiritual beliefs in children. I think Ututu says shared very important lessons here about our spirituality, which are very important. Without God, it's difficult for anyone to navigate life. Life can only be navigated through dependence upon God. 
And it is our responsibility as fathers because I think there was a time when I was in the, in the radio station, we were together with Umfo Nisufali. And at the time, there was a, a logo that we used to, not, not a logo, we used to, we, there was a terminology we were using. And I think we were saying, Indod, Engelan Kloko, Iyin Kloko Emuhumu. All right? A man without a head is a headache. All right? Now remember, the head of a man is Christ. And the head of a woman is a man. Therefore, if as a man you don't have a head, you are going to be a headache to the woman. Because you don't have a head. And I'm surprised. I mean, as a pastor, 70-80% uh, of members are women. And you have 30 or 20%. I'm asking myself a question. These women don't have heads. They are here without heads. <laughs> and how are they living at home? Because if they don't have heads here, it means even at home, there are no heads. The, that headache thing is important. We need to remember, as parents, particularly as fathers, we develop spirituality. As parents, we teach values. Children don't steal. We teach them that stealing is wrong. So that when they are old, they understand corruption is wrong because corruption is stealing. But if we have not taught them at home, they are going to do it. Now, as parents, we teach values. That's why we tell them, you are not going to have a wife that comes at night and we see that wife in the morning. There is a process of having a wife. We teach them. There are, there are values that are being taught. And if you don't teach them those values, you are going to struggle. The other important aspect is, Fathers are role models of masculinity. It's important for them to show the boys how things are done. It's important for them to close the garage. It's important for them to make sure that the yard is clean, to make sure that the car is clean. You need to show them that those things are done by men. Not that women cannot do them, but as a father, you need to show that there are things that you cannot sleep without having done as a father. Are we still together? Yeah. Then, fathers are moral guides. If you have a mistress as a father, will you be able to say to your child, it is wrong to have a mistress? You can't. Therefore, you are a moral guide. You, you are creating yourself in your child. You know, one of the pastors was at my home, and he was looking at my son. And I don't know what my son did. And I, I think something, he, he was being stubborn on something. And this man said, yo, <laughs> now he's looking at me and he says, because of your stubbornness, the child has become more stubborn than you. Now, these small things that we do, children emulate and children do. Fathers are moral uh, leaders, leaders and we have a shared responsibility with the families that we are leading. Very important aspects that we look at. And then fathers, they are strengthening the connections. A father strengthens the connection at home. There is a connection between the father, the mother, and the child. All right? 
And if that connection is not strengthened, then as a father, you are not a glue. You're supposed to be a glue that is strengthening the connection that is there. And two, you are a glue that connects uh, the child at work. Now, you have taught how to behave and do things well at home. Then when the child is going to work, that child is transferring the values that she or he has received at home to work. And when the child is there, you can be proud that because we funded Rondo, a car. That's what we do as parents, as fathers. As schooling, that's what we do. We are creating a child that will understand other children, a child that will be immersed with what is happening around him or her. That's what we are creating. That's what we are a glue of. At the doctor's office, when you are visiting the doctor, the child understands that even if I'm going to get that injection, I have a father who's going to say, stay next to me and say, my, my child, I understand. It's not so sore, but you need to get it. All right? And particularly your boy children, because they are like their fathers, they are scared of injections. <laughs> someone who's going to help the children to adapt to school programs. And that's a parent, that's a father who's going to do that because it's a new thing from, from a child, for a child to actually do that. My children were, at, at some point, they were feeling this school thing they didn't know, man. It's good for people who have not gone to school. We wake up so early. No, man, that's not fair. Now I'm saying to them, waking up so early now is preparing you for work. When you wake up for work, you are not going to complain because you are used to waking up. Then when we do these things, they prepare you uh, for a better life, not the one for the A and C. <laughs> All right. Did, did I mention a particular part? No, I'm sorry. I didn't. <laughs> All right. Our children learn in difficult situations, and they need to see us in those situations. Our children, they end up, I know those of us who have children at university, they may not have done anything else but have been part of the FISMA school program and they get arrested. And, and you need to be a support base for your child because even though you might not want them to be, in, to, to be arrested, but they have been, Therefore, you need to be there for your children. That's what Jesus said. He says, if you are kind to those, you have been kind to me. Therefore, you start with caring for your child. Let me tell you these parents and fathers that we do not have a dirty bin from municipality to put our children. We don't have that. And if you don't have a dirty bin, make sure that you are not making your child a debt that needs to be in a bin yes. as a father. Okay. Sometimes divorce can be a very traumatic thing to the two people that are divorcing. But have you stopped and checked how worse it is to the children? And those who are divorcing have never really thought about it. Even if they are thinking about it, they are minimizing the danger and the damage that is caused by divorce to the children. Even if they are old, it causes damage. Therefore, as a father, in those circumstances, be a glue to your children. In parent education classes, remember, when your child is a parent, he is still a child too. <laughs> he doesn't cease to be a child too. You still have a responsibility of a father to your grown-up child. And you need to be involved in his life. 
Remember, this time, you are not involved as someone who's transferring values because you have transferred values already. You are there as a support. You are there as someone who he bounces ideas with. You are there as someone who advises, but you are never out of your child's life until the child dies or you die. You are always part of his or her life. In fatherhood programs, you need to strengthen the connections of your children. Programs like these, they are helping us to have a better picture of who, of how to be a father and how to exercise our fatherhood uh, in life. All right? In marriage or family partnership, in our marriage as husband and wife with our children and in their marriages also, you as a father need to have that connection. You need to create connections and strengthen the connections. I'm going to share a few quotes. The first one comes from uh, Donald Miller. And Donald Miller once said, Without a positive male role model in your life, it is extremely difficult to become a man who benefits his family and benefits society. That male figure, that role modeling is very important. That's what uh, Ronald Miller says. I have also <clears throat> uh, taken an opportunity to get another writer who writes, uh, I'm sorry, sorry, who writes and says, the husband is a house band of the home treasure. He is binding his strong, uh, earnest, devoted affection, the members of the household, mother, the children, uh, and the children, together in the strongest bonds of unity. Remember, the father plays that role of binding the family and of making sure that we have strong bonds as a family. It is the father who is responsible for making sure that we have those things. There's another quotation which I liked from uh, this writer. She says, the home is an institution of God. It is an institution of God. God designed that the family circle Father, mother, and children should exist in this world as a fan. You know, when you have a company, the company has objectives. The company is licensed. Is, 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 it's an official organization. The company has rules that are governing the company itself. Therefore, the company is something that operates uh, where everybody has a part to play. Therefore, she is actually saying a family is what he is in, she is indicating here. And there are three things that are important. The father, mother, as well as the children. Remember this. Remember this. Very important. Then allow me to uh, share some statistics again. Uh, closer to the end. Now, here, I, according to Dube in 2016 and Fraser in 2015, uh, they wrote this in the Theological Journal uh, 2017. They say children who are fatherless are estimated at 2.13 million in South Africa. Nine million children grow without fathers in South Africa. And Butler in 2013 highlighted the following. Absent fatherhood in 2011 rose from 42% to 48%. And 71% of children who do not finish school come from fatherless homes. And then, these statistics were taken from Casting 2014, Fathers for Life 2013, Statistics uh, South Africa 
in 2011 and got sale and Mel in 2010. Therefore, this is something very, very important. And I want to continue with these stats so that we can see something very important. These statistics, uh, they cause havoc, caused havoc in terms of family and society in America. Now, what did they do? 63% of suicides, they come from fatherless homes. 70% of juveniles in state-operated institutions, they come from fatherless homes. 80% of rapists motivated by displaced anger come from fatherless homes. I hope you, you, you are getting the stats and the difficulty that is there. And then research has shown uh, the following, that 40% of all children do not live with their biological fathers. And 85% of children with behavioral problems come from fatherless homes. 90% of homeless children come from fatherless homes. The fatherhood is one of the most important things. Without fatherhood, you can see the havoc that is being caused by these statistics. All right, let me quickly look at the stats again. Uh, the research continues to show that men who commit, uh, men commit 90% of major crimes, men, and those men are fathers. Two, men commit 100% rapes, and those men are fathers. Men commit 95% of burglaries, and those men are fathers. Men commit 91% of the offenses against the family, and it's men who are fathers. Men comprise 94% of drunk drivers, and those men are fathers. And, and <laughs> the one who said he, 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 can't, he can't understand why I would drink and drive. <laughs> And, and, and here, the statistics are saying men are doing it. Something that is unthinkable, but men are doing it. All right. Let's quickly look at uh, statistics on fatherless. Uh, South Africa is one of the countries that have high figures regarding absent fathers. Monroe in 2008 put it this way. The root cause of many social economic problems and challenges are the absent of the absent fathers or are the absence of fathers in our world. That's the root problem, the absence of fathers in our world. I'm sure as we sit here, we have an experience of having an absent father in, in your life. All right. I've gleaned the statistics again. Uh, these are from uh, Statistics of Africa 2021. Uh, it's children living without their biological fathers. Blacks, 68.3% of children, they live without their biological fathers. And colors, 48.7. Indians, 13.9. And whites, 19.8. This is a disgrace, Bandumabut. This is a disgrace that we, we have children, children that are not living with their biological parents at that percentage. When we have an opportunity of being with our children. All right. Let's quickly look at the absent, the father absent effect on children. One, the emotional stress. What happens is they deviate from a good behavior because there is an absent father. The behavior that you wanted to enforce, they deviate from that. Number two, you notice that uh, there is a cultural disorientation. Now, remember, culture shapes our children. Because I'm an African, there are things that I do as an African 
that would save my children. Therefore, there is a disorientation of culture when the children are not staying with you as a biological parent or father. Then the third thing that is also important is psychological stress. Children, you begin to get poor performance at school, you begin to get low self-esteem from children, and you begin to get depression from children because these things happen uh, to our children. Let me now uh, do concluding remarks so that I don't take the whole day talking about these effects of fatherhood. The first thing I want to say to you is that fathers have a God-given responsibility to care for the family. And the family is father, wife, and child. We have a God-given responsibility. And we need to exercise that God-given responsibility. The second one is that fathers are capacitated to lead their families by example. All right? We lead by example. We are not saying people must do things that we cannot do. If one and God that will make sure that you are leading by example. The third thing that is important is that fathers set the bar for relationships with others. All right? It begins at home where you establish relationships, and then they, when they are out there, they will be able to establish lasting and faithful and honest relationships with others. Fathers are teachers of self-confidence to their sons and daughters. Very important. We teach them to be confident when they stand in front of people, when they talk to us. We establish uh, that rapport with them, help them to, to reach the high standard in life. Fathers are teachers of resilience towards development of the child. It's difficult we are in difficult times, but you need someone who's going to stand in the test of the time. The world is testing our children, and as parents, we need to provide a mechanism for them to survive. Fathers are teachers of respect and kindness, all right? Therefore, the way I respect their mother, it's how they will see the respect for me. And the way I respect them, because I just don't talk anyhow to them. If I am angry, I am know how I'm going to approach them. I'm not just going to throw words at them, because they are human beings, they have feelings. Therefore, once they pick up that I have respect for them, they will learn the respect and emulate it, even if they are not with me. And allow me, therefore, to say to you today, uh, it is a blessing to be a father. And I am praying every day that my being a father to my children may always be a blessing to them. And I'm praying that each of us as we are seated here be the good and best fathers that this world can ever give. Therefore, today, to the lecture uh, of Dr. Um, Gorky, I want to say, May God be with us as we emulate the responsibilities, the work that he has shown us as fathers. Be a good father. Go and be that good father. May God bless you.
I was just looking at the slides, and as you're talking, I'm like, um, maybe if they told me this is what fatherhood means, I would have been singing until today. <laughs> just to play safe. <laughs> but thank you so much for.